Hey there guys, so uh, welcome back to another episode of 4K Garage. Right, now in this episode I wanted to finish up the brake install. That includes uh, installing the rear calipers, uh, fixing the rear handbrakes, also installing some new wheel studs all the way around, I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment, and finally bleeding the brakes, uh, which I mean is something I always really hate. <laughs> so that's going to be going to be a two-man job, so I've got a little bit of help in to uh, help me on that. Good fun and games. So let's just jump into it. Let's get around to the rear of the car. And and just hop straight into things. Right, so here we are again. Um, got the handbrake all sorted, got that new pin. Uh, as you can see, nice and, well, I'd say sturdy, but that's that's how it is. So, got some new studs to pull through. As you can see, they're loose in the hub at the moment. I managed to get those in. It wasn't it wasn't easy. I had to take all the handbrake assembly off, and there's just about enough room. Right, so these are 63 mil studs, and I've just done this just because I don't really plan to run any spacers, but I'd just like to have a little bit more thread for my uh, wheel nuts to engage, torque down, hold the wheel nuts, hold the wheels on a little bit better. Um, and if I did ever have to run any sort of spacer for whatever reason, if I put the old wheel on or such, all in all, it's a little bit safer this way. Um, the only problem is, is getting them in. It can be a right pain, really, because you normally have to take off the hub and get it all pressed in. As you can see, I didn't do that. So with all the handbrake assembly, I was just about, I was just about able to get these 63 mil studs in the hub. Um, I would not recommend trying to get any longer than that without taking the hub assembly off, as it's just, I just don't see it being possible. If they were shorter, if they were the OEM studs, you'd have no problem at all, so that would be that would be an issue. So all I need to do now is pull them home, um, and I'm going to do that by, I've got an old socket here, and a sacrificial wheel nut. So um, these wheel nuts I do not plan to use anymore, so I'm just going to get these finger tight on there, and then using my old, old torque wrench slash breaker bar, and a, essentially a crowbar, I'm just going to pull them through. It takes a little bit of time, it's quite a lot of effort as well but um, I just don't have any means to get this hub in a press. But with these uh, studs done, so now I want to put the rear brake on. Now having done the other side already, I know for a fact that this brake dust shield will not work with the aftermarket brakes. And that's kind of the same case with uh, a lot of aftermarket kits, Brembo, Wheelwood, all that. They all tell you to, well, they actually tell you to remove the brake dust shield altogether, but it's not a very difficult job. You basically just hammer out the some spot welds that hold it on. Get a chisel and a hammer, smash, 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 comes right off. But I actually like the idea of keeping it all together. Um, and the reason for that really is just, you know, it does serve a purpose. It does shield a lot of this area from brake dust and whatnot. And it shields a lot of the hub assembly from heat that radiates off the uh, discs. And yeah, with things like airbags, you know, I don't really want to get those all dirty. It just, all in all, I'd rather keep it as much as I can. What I'm going to do and what I actually did on the other side was cut these two corners off. So they get in the way of the caliper, so they have to go. Just cut some kind of slices down the shield and actually bend it back out of the way. Because once you've done that, once you've taken off the strength of this lid, it's actually quite easy to bend. So I think I'm going to do that. Uh, I did it on the other side and it seemed to work out right. Give it a little cut, give it a little paint, bend it back out of the way. So uh, let's crack out the angle grinder. Bit of paint to stop it from rusting. Not too precious about how it looks.
Right, there we go. It looks runny, it looks horrible, but at least it's not going to rust. Now, I'm going to have some lunch. Well, that's not meant to sit on to have lunch. Right, just got to get the uh, all the bolts torqued up, uh, get the brake line on, go from there. So let's start with these ones. Nice. So uh, the instructions call for 80 newton meters, so that's what I'm doing really. It's not actually a whole lot of force, so you know, I think the thread lock that comes with the kit does a lot of the work, of course. It was more on the front, bigger bolts, I imagine. I don't know how torque works with bolts, but it's uh, a bit of a witchcraft. So here we are again, brake line. Start with this, has to go this way. And then throw in this packet. Just nut to secure it. Right now the brake line. There we go. Now this so it's nice and secure in that bracket. Catch. That's that side done. Now we need to secure the line. There we go. Rear brakes officially done. Now let's get the whole system bled and then brakes are finished. I'm going to bleed the car using the old school yeah, two man method. One person in the car pressing the brake pedal and the other person you know, easing off the uh, bleeding nuts and checking for any air bubbles. So uh, what we have here is a little you know, easy braking clutch bleed kit, whatever, pretty old one. I've used it a few times now, so no big deal. And I'm going to be filling the system with this uh, brand new Motol RBF 600.4 fluid. Um, heard some pretty good stuff about it. Pretty decent performance and apparently good at not overheating too quickly. So I've got a decent amount of this because I'm just going to do the whole system. Uh, that's why I've left the, that's why I'm not worried about leaving the brake lines open for you know a week and a bit now. Um, so I'm just doing the whole system, flush the whole lot out. Right, so um, yeah, let's crack on with it.
Well, there you have it, guys. Um, what can I say? Breaks are always something I really hate doing. Uh, I know I'm not the only one out there. I've had a few comments on the last video of people uh, having issues with their brakes in the past. They're just so fiddly. There's so much to, uh, you know, so much to break, so much to go wrong, especially when you have to fiddle around taking off all the handbrake shoes. I mean, you don't have to, but of course mine ended up falling off practically. Um, but at the same time, they're such an important part of the car, of course, there's no point doing anything power-wise without upgrading the brakes, even if it's just a really good pad material, they can do so much. So, uh, but hopefully with this setup, it should give some added braking force, some good pedal feel. It should be a nice balance of everything, really, especially for some future power upgrades, which uh, I'll probably share with you in a uh, future episode. We were able to get the handbrake all sorted on both sides, tested that and that, that works. Got all the rear brakes installed, got all them all shimmed up and spaced out and exactly where they need to be. And then got the whole system nice and bled, so get a nice firm pedal feel back. So uh, I think that's it finally on the brakes. I think you'll agree they look pretty good. Just coming around to the other side. But for now guys, um, as I always say, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, do all that good stuff. Leave a comment, leave a like, whatever. And uh, next episode, we will be getting on to the wheels, which uh, I'm very excited for. Hopefully a few of you are. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one. Cheers. Bye-bye.